It's YouTube Wednesday! This will be the whitest you'll ever see this apron. <laughs> this is day one. I'm knocking out some armor for a client. So this is like the basis of what it will kind of look like at the end. The pattern that I'm using is from Punished Props and it is the steel armor pattern from Skyrim. I'm just doing a lot of different things to it to really change it up. But that's the basis of these pieces. I'm not using a pattern for the shoulders. I'm just making up my own because that'll make each character a little bit different. And the pattern is free at Punished Props. And you print it out on paper as a PDF, a little bit of spray adhesive, lay them down on your foam and just cut. Uh, it's really nice and easy. This requires a little bit of thought. I want a nice big shoulder piece for the frost giant armor that I'm doing. I'm looking in my mind what I want it to look like in profile, and I'm just gonna draw the profile. And then I can cut this out. Someone gave me crap once in YouTube comments for throwing away these guys when they got dull. I looked into it and I found a sharpener that I like. So now these will last a year. All right, so if this is my shoulder, but I'm looking at it like this is the shoulder that I want. So I'm gonna make two of these, and this is the front. The back has to be flipped. I'm gonna trace it one more time, not flipped. I'm gonna put these two together. If I like them, then I'm done. I'll trace the other one. If I don't, then I make adjustments and try again. It's $10 for a four pack of this foam. If I have to do some experimentation, and I waste one piece, that experimentation cost me $2.50. I can live with that. Now I have two that match up. You don't want to put on too much contact cement, but you do want to put on enough. This is a test, I kind of have to do it first. I could certainly just heat this with a heat gun, it would be fine. But as I have a foam oven, I'm gonna use that. Countdown five minutes. This piece of foam is garbage, unless I like that pattern. So I might as well just cut this piece out. If I had done this a little better, I could probably get both shoulders out of one. I don't think I'll be able to. Oh, look at that, it's so close. All right, I can do it, but I'll have a little nick taken out over here. That's battle damage, battle damage. Last thing I want to do is have a heat gun on in the shop right now, but here we are. Yes. I normally connect the back side and then the front, and then I work my way towards the middle because I don't do registration marks like most people do. I do these little pinches to get them flat and even. This is not a, like, if you haven't worked with EVA foam yet, it's not like an alien material. This is really just easy stuff. I mean, I normally buy mine at Harbor Freight. Now that's a little harsh of a down angle here. Uh, might be better if it flared out a little bit more. However, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it out quite a bit. But you can see from that shape, I got the pauldron that I wanted. Not like I'm scrapping it, it's gonna, I'm gonna use it. These are pieces that you can obviously trace and hand cut or draw. This is five millimeter foam. I happen to have a laser. Is it more of a pain in the butt to do it without a laser? Yes, but you certainly can, you don't need it. Back is pushed together, lots of force. Do this side together, lots of force. I'm gonna line up the bottom edges and then fold it on itself. If I do a little bit of that side, a little bit of this side, really pinch them when they come together. This is the one that has a little bit of da battle damage up here, not a big deal. And now I have two shoulders. I'm gonna use the same pattern so they're even, nice and big like I wanted, perfect. Countdown, six minutes. And while I'm waiting, I'm carefully getting this uh, head design that I have out. Everything is now punched out of this. Throw this away. 
Can't throw it away. Too much foam left on it. Useful. And this is the back. I like making monsters. The uh, plans don't call for this piece, but I almost always put a piece inside to back up my seams. It's a thinner foam, but it's a higher density foam, so it has just as much strength as this bigger piece. It has to dry. I've got to coat this in contact cement eventually. I might as well just do it now while I'm waiting. Put your arms down. Great. That holds that on there nicely. Look down. That's why I had you look down. Shh, let it happen. Is that your bad shoulder? Yep, sure is. Okay. <laughs> might have helped. It actually felt pretty good. Yeah. It might have helped. You never know. <laughs> okay. It looks like I am just willy nilly covering this in contact cement. That's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. Just if I want to stick something somewhere one day, I'm covered. I'm doing this to be faster. So that down the road, I don't have to wait. Like, oh, I want to put this here, so I have to contact cement it. All my side pieces are contact cemented. Now my whole torso is going to be contact cemented. I'm just lining my seams up of the trim so that they are actually over top of, they're not in the same spot as the seams of the shoulder. Everything is strengthening everything else. Trim is on that shoulder. When you want your trim to fit right, cut it a little long. And then you can put it in there with some pressure and just squeeze that foam down. And now you've got a nice tight fit. Oh, 
Like, that's how much extra I've got. But you just push it down. It's foam. It'll collapse. Boy, that takes a while. I'm gonna do easier stuff. That is just about finished as far as decor goes. All these little horns I got at Walmart after Halloween last year, and I got them for 50 cents a package. I could sculpt a horn, mold a horn, pour one up in latex, but I think that's more than 25 cents each of work. So I'm not gonna do that. Now the downside is they're covered in glitter. Just have to deglitterify them. I don't even mind it that much because this is a frost giant. I'm putting snow on this guy anyway, but I kind of have to process all these horns now. First day of my new apron, now it's covered in glitter. It'll be glittery forever. I'm gonna cut the end off and then I'm going to put a plug of foam on, and then I'll attach these horns to that. I feel like I'm peeling carrots. Probably because I'm wearing a white apron while I do it. Okay, now I have to get this size, because I'm gonna glue a plug down to here, and then I glue one of these over top of that plug, and then that's a good, pretty solid mounting base. Uh, whole saw, safety gloves, all that. I haven't thought at all about where I'm gonna put these things, nor have I test fit them to see if they even fit inside of the horn. Yeah, pretty good. I think it's looking pretty good so far. I like it a lot. That's it, that's where I want it to sit. Just like that. Strap around the waist, I'll pinch the back, nice. This one is on top, this one is underneath. This one is underneath, now it's on top. Turn the corner, turn the corner. This one is underneath. Now, it's on top. 
is the back of the armor, and it's probably gonna get covered up by fur. But here we are. I have both of these two to do. <laughs> but I think I got it. Okay, both of those are done. Alright, don't worry about any of this, but just get the inside edges and the outside edges. Okay, so this is a little too thick. It's okay, but when, this stuff should be a little thinner. This is, well, okay, so this is one, this is one fifth contact cement and four fifths xylene to thin, to thin the contact cement. That's what that's for. And Prop Monkey Studios um, tipped me off to this as a really good primer for EVA foam. Now paint will stick to this like way better. So you, this is a, an essential step if you're painting. This is thicker, but I'm okay with it. Problem is you'll see some brush strokes and stuff, but I don't hate that because of what this is. But if I was trying to do something real smooth, like armor that wasn't distressed and pitted and all that, then I would want it to be thinner. And then this has to dry, but it does dry fast because mostly solvent. I can't wait to paint this sucker. We'll frost his shoulders with like snow. This guy is just gonna go sit in front of a fan. All right, so this is very old black latex paint and tap water. Uh, that's all that's in the cup, it's mixed together. Um, and you just wanna kind of put it up on the side of the cup to see if it has legs, which means how much is sticking to the cup and how thick is it, how translucent. So that's pretty crusty black paint. Um, but I was joking with Robert because he thought I was gonna sling paint on the camera. He kind of jumped back really quick. And what we're doing is we're doing an antique process on this. So we have that nice bright silver underneath, and then we're painting this watery black paint. You can see it has a little bit of translucency to it, uh, and that's why we thinned it with water. It's just regular latex house paint. And then, this was a while ago that I made this. Yeah, we towel it off. We kind of sponge it off or just get off a good bit of yep. it. Uh, and it really highlights the detail in the crevices. All this detail that we lasered and put on is uh, it's just really brought to the surface by this black wash. Antiquing and dry brushing are two of my favorite techniques for sure. So we're going to treat the whole armor this same way, shoulders and everything.
What's nice about this process is, you know, you use black paint and you get a little bit of age and you just get a nice detail pop, but you can then go back and do brown washes after this dries. Uh, and brown washes is, you know, it's grime and dirt. Uh, you can do this process a bunch of different, you know, colors and ways and it, it builds up. So normally I'll do, you know, two layers of this and that's it. Uh, sometimes just one does it. Um, but you can really bring the translucency down by adding more water and then do more and more layers in order to really control that this detail and how much you put on it. Uh, this is blue spray paint, and I'm just misting. I'm not painting it blue, and uh, you could tell I'm shooting up, so I'm giving it a directional, uh, just like an airbrush. Spray paint is you know directional when it comes out. So this is another color, and this color I'm not shooting it uh, up towards the armor. I'm shooting it down. So this is a lighter color of blue. It's like a seafoam blue green, and then you're going to have a highlight of the seafoam blue. You'll have the darkened silver, and then you'll have the dark blue underneath. So you're giving it tones. Here I'm mixing uh, some metallics and some blue spray paint. I love mixing spray paint and then painting it on. And that's what we're doing our uh, some of this trim in that on you know Nordic armor would be brass. But adding a little bit of that blue in there with it. Uh, just helps the tonality and it makes it all seem more homogenous. Just a nice emulsifier. That not work symbol is really nice too. I, I've used that on, if you put it on Norse armor, it looks Norse. If you put it on Asian armor, it looks Asian. It's uh, pretty universal. And then here's, of course, a, a nice silver to dry brush. Anything that's going to be cool, you, you want to stick with uh, silvers. We did the brass on this. I don't think cold and gold go together very well. Like silver and, and cold weather go together really well. So the majority is silver. But I could not ignore all the brass accents on Norse armor. So that's why we, we did uh, both metals. Normally, I like to pick one... Is it, I pick one color of metal for whatever I'm working on. And this is of course blue mixed in with the silver. Again, makes it a little more homogenous, but it does add the metallic touch to this. These are very nice. Isn't dry brushing the best thing ever? Because this is antiqued first, and that kind of popped the detail, gave it some age, gave it some wash, and then we're dry brushing to put the metallics on so then, you know, you're building up many layers of, uh, of color, and it just adds a lot of depth. And the brown is just for the, the horns. Whatever animal horn that is is going to be brown. And, you know, who knows what kind of horns they are. I probably should, but they're just animal horns. As opposed to non-animal horns. This is a product uh, that you get from Rose Brand. It is Flex Bond. Um, it kind of is Elmer's gluey, and we're going to paint it on uh, big and goopy. It's a strengthener is what it is. And it's going to, I thinned it a little bit, um, it's going to uh, dry clear. So this is going to go on, and you're going to think, you are ruining this thing. It's like a Bob Ross thing. Every time he starts something new or a new step, it's like, you're going to ruin it. You're going to ruin it. And then it, it works. It's fine. Uh, and that's kind of how a lot of painting goes. So putting this stuff on, it just gives it another skin. It kind of seals the paint. Uh, I do it on a lot of our wearables that we make out of EVA. It normally gets a coat of contact cement and xylene, and then it'll get this. And I think you saw me do that earlier. All right, it's been a while. No idea what I'm doing. I'm mixing up paint for something. Oh, we're dry brushing the horns. That's right. Okay, yeah, so uh, one tone, that's not very realistic, but then you, uh, 
you do a second layer on there and I put a little bit of gold in that too to give it a little bit of light catch um, which will make it look like it's a bit shiny and now I'm just knocking back some of the brightness a bit this is a hot rolled patina stain this is a very uh, different stuff this is uh, it, I think it smells good but it's very strong and it's a stain it's the, almost the same thing as doing the wash but this is a uh, just a, a different way I wanted to do a little more pop a little more highlight in some areas on those are those areas of the armor that's going to catch more dirt those areas that are going to show a little more age this is super 77 spray adhesive that I am putting on and I'm putting that on because we're going to add some snow it's like magic magical glitter fairy snow look at that this is polyflake buffalo snow um, it's my favorite it's got a prismatic almost glitter look to it but it really catches light well um, if you watch the movie legend you can see it in, on top of the snow and in the trees this is ultra clear gutter sealant it's not silicone it is ultra clear gutter sealant in a caulking tube and it's a great way to do icicles it never gets as firm as dried silicone but it is uh, it's so clear look at that yeah you so you do a little bit of snow you do a little bit of the uh, the clear for ice dribbled down the front of it these are this was for a frost giant type guy so and here I am I'm kicking back up the silver on the armor because I think we knocked it down too much and then uh, using the paintbrush you see me kind of scrubbing in it really looks like in those spots they polished it and that got the shine up these are really fun to make we did we did a couple sets of them and they all kind of turned out beautiful and then strapping armor is always kind of how do you do that and, uh, this one we added a, a belt a belt to each side so it could buckle I buy a lot of those nice big work belts and in a lot of Norse character designs you'll see furs so I did a big fur back patch on this um, we didn't do of course as much detail on the back so it was just nice to uh, have this and here I'm just knocking down the fun fur looks so new all the time and this just makes it look a little gnarly and nasty and what am I putting on it contact cement um, and if any of that shows it's no big deal because it's no big deal this is the back and we're uh, drying our contact cement because that's what makes it stick and now there's a fur accent to the back of the armor a nice big fur piece see how that sticks up yeah yeah and then when you buckle the belt that fur tucks in to uh, the belt and those are there's side pieces that we did for the armor that'll go on that belt also well they'll go on the actual belt not on the armor's belt there we go a little bit of hot glue to hold that top piece of fur where we want it and then you don't want to see the inside of that so now you put glue there and you fold it over and that absolutely ensures that the actor is going to have an itchy neck all night but they'll look cool that's what it's all about I love seeing fur like underneath of armor like you know they had it for a lining or whatever I think that's very stylish I look like Axe and Smash from Demolition they were wrestlers in the 80s go make stuff all right so I want to mention to you guys that we just launched Haunter Class which is at hunterclass.com and uh, that is our online mask making course and also check out monster Cat, which we do right here if you want to make masks and make things 
Uh, we are getting more and more ways to do that to you. Want to follow on more of our adventures and help us keep the lights on? You can join our Patreon. You guys are awesome. Go make stuff.